Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. Today we'll have our sixth lesson in a series of six videos on the topic of ratios and proportions. These are the kind of ratios and proportions problems that you're likely to encounter on the GRE or GMAT or SAT or SAT. And if you're preparing for any one of, any one of these exams, these are some basic uh, fundamental topics that we've been covering in the series. And as I said, in the series uh, on the topic of ratios and proportions, today we'll do our last, last lesson. We'll do three problems. Very first of those three problems, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. What I want you to do is, after I've read the problems to you, after I've read the problem to you, what I want you to do is pause the video, as always, do the problem yourself, and once you have done so, then and only then, resume the video, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. But do not give up, try it, do it yourself, even if it takes you a little bit of uh, trouble, do it yourself. Don't just watch the video, don't just continually sitting, there. don't just sit there and passively continue to watch the video. That's not how you're going to learn anything. Okay, here we go. It says, in a college, the ratio of freshmen, the, in a college, the ratio of freshmen to sophomores is 7 to 10. They go, on, they, they go on to tell us that the ratio of sophomores to seniors is 5 to 3. And finally, we are told that the ratio of juniors to seniors is 5 to 6. The question is very simple, very straightforward. The question simply is, what's the ratio of freshmen to juniors? What's the ratio of freshmen to juniors? These are the answer choices, 35 to 36, 21 to 50, 5 to 9, 5 to 7, and 7 to 5. I'll give you 5 seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, here we go. Do it yourself. Okay, here we go. Now, if you have watched, if you have watched the first five videos in the series, you know there is a classical way of doing this problem. And if you try to do it in a classical way, it will take you forever and ever, and it will be very difficult, very tedious, very time-consuming, very annoying to keep track of all the bits of information. We're not going to do it the classical way. We're just going to do, do it. The, we're going to. We're just going to do it the quick and dirty way. And here is how the quick and dirty way goes. First of all, we need to label our, our categories. We have freshmen. Let's call them F. We have freshmen, we have sophomores, let's call them S. Then we have juniors, the, 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 of course J for juniors. And of course we can use S again for seniors because we already used the S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use L for seniors. L being the last year. L represents the last year which is the seniors. Okay. Now that we have our labels are sorted out, we can begin our process. Watch what happens. We are told that the ratio of freshmen to sophomores, freshmen to sophomore is 7 to 10. 7 to 10. They go on to tell us that the sophomores to seniors, make sure you pay attention, this is sophomores, this is this is sophomores to seniors, seniors are L, sophomores to seniors is 5 to 3. Sophomores to seniors. At this point we need to pause, we need to pause because we have a problem. Problem is that in the first part of the story we had 10 sophomores. In the second five of this part of the story, we already, all of a sudden we have only five sophomores. That won't do. We cannot go around changing the number of people. We have to have the consistent number of people. If there are ten people, if there are ten sophomores in the first part of the story, it must remain ten throughout the entire story. Here we have only five. So we need to fix it. Take this quantity and multiply it by two. Now we have ten. Voila. But if we change this to ten, the ratio between sophomores and seniors, sophomores and seniors, must remain 5 to 3. In order for us to have the ratio of 5 to 3, if you multiply this by 2, we must multiply this number of seniors by 2. Now we have 5 to 3 ratio. Now we can continue. Let's read the last part. They go on to tell us that juniors to seniors is 5 to 6. Juniors to seniors, 5 to 6. Juniors are 5 to 6. Juniors to Juniors to seniors is 5 to 6, so they, we actually lucked out. We actually lucked out because it's the same number as before. Here we had 6, and here we have 6, so we don't have to do anything actually. That's it, we are done. The question simply is, what's the ratio of freshmen to juniors? Freshmen are right here. Freshmen to juniors. Freshmen are right there. There are 7 freshmen. And how many juniors? There are 5 juniors. There you go, we are done. The answer is 7 to 5. The answer is 7 to 5. That's it, we are done. That's all there was. The answer is 7 to 5. 
question is question is if, if I were to give you one more problem similar to this one will you be able to will you be able to tackle it yourself it's fine now shall we I'm going to give you another problem very similar to the one we just finished and do it yourself this time okay here we go same exact situation we're not going to change anything same exact setup we're going to have a college with four classes obviously we're just going to change the numbers so here we go the ratio of freshmen to sophomores is three to two three to two and you're going to do it yourself you understand three to two we are further told that the ratio of sophomores to seniors, sophomores to seniors, is 6 to 5. 6 to 5. And finally, we are told that the juniors to seniors, juniors to seniors, is 5 to 2. 5 to 2. And the answer choices are... Six to five, nine to five, sixteen to five, and finally eighteen to five. Do it yourself, friend. Do it yourself, and see what see what happens. I'll give you a few seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Pause the video. Here we go. The ratio of freshmen to sophomores is three to two. Sophomores to seniors is six to five. Juniors to seniors is five to two. Well, let's begin. Let's see what we can do there. Everything is already set up. All we have to do is plug in numbers. All we have to do is plug in numbers. But pay attention. The numbers in each category has to be the numbers have to be consistent in each category. They cannot change. From one part of the story, the second part of the story, the third part of the story, they all have to be the same numbers. If you are, if you if you tell me that there are twelve red marbles in the bag. But that, that must remain 12 red marbles, it cannot all of a sudden become 6 or 13 or 14. They have to be the same numbers, same number of red marbles in all parts of the stories. Do you understand? You can manipulate them, but make sure they are always the same. So let's, let's begin. Sophomore, freshman to sophomores is 3 to 2. Freshman to sophomores is 3 to 2, that's easy. 3 to 2, that's very simple. Sophomores to seniors, sophomores to seniors, we are using letter L, remember? L for the last tier of college. Sophomores to seniors is 6 to 5. 6 to 5. As you can see, we have to pause now. We have to pause because I see a 2 here, I see a 6 here. We need to fix it. We need to fix it. We're going to change the colors. And we're going to, since this is 6, we have two choices. Either we can, either we can divide this by 3 and make it a 2, in which case we're going to have to divide 5 by 3 and make it 5 third. Very difficult to find 5 third of a senior. Do you understand? So let's multiply this by 3. So now we have 6 seniors, 6 sophomores here and 6 sophomores here. We have the same number of sophomores in both, both parts of the story. But since the ratio has to be 3 to 2 between freshmen and sophomore, in a, in a, in a, in a, and in order to make sure that the ratio stays 3 to 2 uh, between so freshmen and sophomores, if we're going to multiply the number of sophomores by 3 here, we, we must multiply the number of freshmen by 3. Let's continue. Very simple, very straightforward. Juniors to seniors is 5 to 2. Juniors to seniors is 5 to 2. 5 to 2. Pay attention. It is not 2 to 5. Had it been 2 to 5, it would have been very simple because 5 would match 5. Here we have 5 to 2. But notice 5 to 2. Here we have 2 of them. Here we have 5 of them. We need to make the same numbers. So let's multiply. Let's multiply. Let's use a different color here. Let's multiply. Let's multiply the seniors. We have two here, we have five here, let's multiply that by two and a half. So now two times five, two times two and a half is five, same as this one. And since we multiply this by two and a half, we must multiply this number by two and a half. You must keep track of everything, do you understand? You must keep track of everything. That's it, we're done. The story is over, we're finished. We can answer the question. What's the ratio of the, the, the freshman to Junior, it's the same exact problem, the same exact thing. Freshmen to juniors. How many freshmen do we have? We have nine freshmen. Freshmen, we have nine of them. To juniors, and juniors we have five times two and a half. There we go, five times two and a half.
Just give me a second. Five times two and a half is not. Five times two and a half is not what I wrote down in my notes here, which means these answers are not going to make any sense anymore. I made a mistake. I put down in my notes that five times two and a half is seven and a half. Five times one and a half is seven and a half. Five times two and a half is not seven and a half, which means all of, none of these answer choices are going to make any sense. And if you try to solve the problem and if your answer did not match, I just, I just realized is this five times two and a half. Five times two is ten, and half of five is two and a half, so it's twelve and a half. It's twelve and a half. I'm sorry, it is not. Your answers are. The answers that I gave you here, the answers that I gave you here are not going to work because I made a mistake here. In my notes, I wrote down two and a half times five. I thought it was seven and a half. And had it been seven and a half, well, I'll tell you what happened in a second. It's twelve and a half. It's twelve and a half. How can we make it seven and a half? Four, three. It's very simple. Let's change this to three. Three to two. Three to two. Right here, instead of five to two, let's change it to three to two. Now, now I don't have to make any changes. In which case, three times two and a half, three times two is six, and and three halves is one and a half, and six plus one and a half is seven and a half. Now I don't change the answer choices. And therefore the ratio of freshmen, which is 9, to juniors, which is 7.5. And, and since we have a 7.5 here, we want a whole number. Nine, the ratio of freshmen to juniors is 9 to 7.5. We don't typically represent the ratios in terms of fractions. They are always whole numbers. So let's multiply top and bottom by 2. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2. And I said, I'm sorry. These answer choices would have only worked if you had the right problem. This should have been 3 instead of 5. I made a mistake as I, write, as I was writing the problem. Sometimes it pays to pay attention. And I preach about that all the time. And I do the exact same thing what I always tell you not to do, which is to lose track of uh, details. So 9 times 2 is 18. You're almost done. And 7 and a half times 2 is 15. You reduce the divide top and bottom by 3 and you will find that it is 6 to 5. The answer is 6 to 5. The answer is B. You want to do one more? I'm not sure if you want to do one more after what I just did here, the boo-boo that I just made. Let's do one more. And this time, this time we're going to represent the question a little bit differently. Instead of talking about freshmen, freshmen sophomores, juniors and seniors, they can also talk about different colors of candies or marbles or whatever it might be. So let's say, let's say marbles. In the bag, it's a different problem. Okay, you can tell a different problem. I'm, gonna, I'm about to erase this thing, but before I completely erase it, I'll give you a second to get an un unobstructed view. Lucky for me, it was very simple to fix the error because I didn't, want, I didn't really want to change the answer choices. Here we go, the next problem. Number 33, the last one in the series. In a, and this time, as soon as I finish writing the problem, pause the video, do it yourself. Number 33, in a bag, the ratio of the ratio of red marbles to green marbles is 5 to 8 they go on to tell us that the ratio of ratio of green to yellow is 4 to 3, 4 to 3, 4 to 3. 
finally they tell us the ratio of red marbles to blue marbles is 2 to 7 question goes on to tell us if there are if there are 12 yellow marbles 12 yellow marbles how many blue marbles are are there one more time one more time the ratio of red marbles to green marbles is 5 to 8 ratio of green marbles to yellow marbles is 4 to 3 ratio of red marbles to blue marbles is 2 to 7 what we're being asked is how many blue marbles must we have how many blue marbles must we have if we if we are told that we have 12 yellow marbles in the back if there are 12 yellow marbles in the back how many blue marbles must there be I'll give you five seconds again as always before I start solving it Here we go. Just keep your fingers crossed that I will not make a boo-boo. So we have red. We have... I don't know why I'm going in this order, but red to green. Red to blue to green to yellow. Since I have written down like this in my, in my notes, I'm going to stir with it. Red to blue to green to yellow. Watch what happens. Red to green is 5 to 8 5 to 8 red to green they go on to tell us that green to yellow green to yellow is 4 to 3 pay attention this is where you have to pay attention it is green to yellow not yellow to green green to yellow so we're going to have to green to yellow we have to go in that oh right here green to yellow green to yellow we have green to yellow is 4 to 3 4 to 3 as you can see we have to stop four to three we have eight green marbles in the first half first part of the story we have four green marbles in the second part of the story that won't do we have to fix it so we make this eight as soon as we make this eight we have to make that six because the ratio of green to yellow cannot change the ratio must remain four to three because that's what we are told four to three they go on to tell us that the red to blue is two to seven red to blue where is red red to blue is two to seven as you can see things are going to get prickly two two red to blue red to blue all oh, right here two to seven now we got a problem again we have a problem again watch what happens this is where you have to pay very close attention i'm going to change a different color here this is where you have to pay very close attention so stay with me this is two and this is five they have to have the same numbers so let's multiply this guy this ratio by five and this ratio five to eight by two 2 times 5 is 10 and 5 times 2 is 10 so let's do that we're going to multiply this guy by 5 and as soon as we do that we have to multiply this guy by 5 that is that part is done now we have to go since this since we have 10 red here we must have 10 red right here so we have to multiply this by 2 watch what happens things are going to get very very tricky okay we're not quite done yet we're not quite done yet we need one more marble one more time as soon as we multiply this by 2, now there are 16 of them here. And here there are only 8. That won't do. They have to have the same number. So we have to go one more round. Since there are 16 here and there are 8 here, we have to go one more round. If I can find a different, different color here. Times 2. Times 2. This is because of the fact that we had 8 here, which, which is this 8 right here. And we just multiplied 8 by 2. Since we just multiplied 8 by 2 we must multiply this 8 by 2 which is the last round this is this is our so the first round was 5 to 8 5 to 8 we wrote that down then we have 4 to 3 4 to 3 we wrote that down and then we had 2 to 7 as soon as soon as we put down as soon as we put down 4 4 to 3 as soon as we put down 4 to 3 here we have 8 here we have 4 that was round 1 we had to make that 4 we had to make that 4 into an 8 that was round 1 So now we have 8 here, we have 8 here, I'm not going to put down the round, this is getting too ridiculous because I can't keep track of all the steps, but anyway we are done.
Now we have 16 here since we multiply this guy since we multiply this guy this is 16 here since we multiply this is since this is 16 and here we only had 8 we have to make this 16 since we multiply this by 2 we must multiply that by 2 and now the ratio is still the same ratio is still as you can see ratio is still ratio is still 4 4 to 3 that ratio has not changed it's, it's a 4 to 3 ratio here we multiply by 4 here we multiply we're done that's it we're finished if there are 12 mar if there are 12 yellow marbles in the bag how many blue are there let's see how many yellows do we have here if there are 12 yellow marbles, if there are 12 yellow marbles, well there we go, we have 12 yellow marbles right here. There are 12 of them, that was very easy. If there are 12 yellow marbles, how many blue marbles there must be? If there are 12 yellow marbles, we must have 35 blue marbles. And as always, I forgot to give you the answer choices, that is too late now. It is too late now to give the answer choices, but in if you're curious, the answer choices were 7, 10, 16, 32 and 35. As I said, it's a bit too late to give you the answer choices. The answer is 35. That was the last, that was the last day, part 6 in the series of ratios and proportions. Tomorrow, we'll do some problems dealing with unit digit. How to recognize a unit digit in a given problem. They ask you these questions where they give you long complicated multiple choice, uh, long complicated multiplication problem or a division problem for that matter. And the question simply is, if you were to do it out, what's going to be the unit digit of the problem? Obviously, you're not going to do it out because that will take you forever and ever. If somebody asks you 37 times 49 plus 97 plus 103, what's going to be the unit digit of that, answer, that problem? You're not going to actually do it out, obviously. Those are the sort of problems we'll do tomorrow in the, under the topic of unit digit. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.